Hey guys, what's up? I'm really sorry. I'm about 50 minutes late. As soon as I posted that, I'm going to be really candid. I actually got in a fight with my husband. <laughs> um, so that's why I'm 50 minutes late. Um, but I think it's really good for you guys to understand that stuff happens. <laughs> stuff happens all day long and stuff that you don't plan on happening happens and stuff that you don't like happens and we still roll with the punches and roll along but that's kind of the beauty of this business that we can kind of you know create our own schedules and and our own lifestyle um, but I am not immune to those things either so we're here and I really want to talk about today some interesting things about the business I know I went live before in this group a couple weeks ago and talked about kind of bursting through the glass ceiling and giving a little tough love and talking about like what the difference was between you know when I was struggling in my business and now when I'm kind of thriving in my business but I just want to say like the struggle is never gone like right now I'm totally in the trenches with everyone I have goals to hit have end of the month goals to hit that some of them I'm not close to some of them I will miss all of that kind of stuff um, but I really want to talk about this concept that I keep hearing from my team at least um, and from other coaches in the network you know it's the end of the month people are kind of still reeling from what seemed to be kind of a low month in June for everybody kind of a hard month for hitting success club a hard month for reaching goals all of that kind of stuff and I hear a lot of people saying it's hard that the goal of success club is hard and and you know this month is hard because we went to summit and we all traveled and now we're trying to get back on our feet and hard to juggle everything but the reason I posted that post about my grandparents is I think it's such an interesting perspective to look at like traditional business versus our businesses and kind of what we have to do every month and I also think it's so interesting that I know so many people that are willing to work so hard and sacrifice so many hours of their life to work for someone else and to hit goals for someone else and to make someone else, you know, an income and to be a, a cog in a wheel of someone else's machinery. But when it comes to our own goals and our own life and creating something freeing and, um, you know, lucrative for ourselves on our own schedule and our own time, even though it may require a lot more of the wheels turning up here and a lot more of perspective and a lot more of mindset, right? Because nine to fives are very different than what we do. Nine to fives are you get to go in, someone tells you what to do, and then you get to go home and shut off. And when you own your own business, of course, the perks are much more, but there's still cons, right? There's still, um, you still have to be on point all the time. You still have to be able to dictate your own schedule. I mean, and we're not immune to them. I'm not immune to them. No one is. But when you think about the perspective of, you know, a brick and mortar business versus what we do, what we do is not hard. Yeah, having people commit, uh, filling our funnels, talking to people constantly, creating relationships on social, um, whenever, wherever you want is not difficult. So I want to talk to you guys first about, you know, hitting an end of the month goal. So if you guys are watching this live stream right now and you're not at your goal and there are three and a half days left, you know, almost, almost only three now, and we're entering this weird end of the month where it's the weekend, right? Um, it's it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sundays are usually awesome. But when I'm going into a new month, I always look at what the next month ends on and if it's going to be difficult for me to or my team to lock in those goals last minute. Because that's something that as business owners you need to think about. You know, for so long in my business, I always thought, okay, I just need to hit success club this month. But I lacked that kind of foresight when it came to how am I going to hit it? What do I need to concentrate on? What's happening this month? What's launching this month? And where does the month end? So that's something to keep in mind as we're going into a new month. But, you know, these last couple days are pivotal only because, <clears throat> so if you're in this group, <clears throat> and you're striving towards diamond or you are currently diamond and you're wanting to take advantage of that diamond bonus, these are the last couple days to hit success club in July to receive that bonus. So not only do you need to be an active diamond for six consecutive 
back-to-back -back weeks in the quarter, but you also need to hit Success Club for every month of the quarter. So that means July, August, September, you're hitting a minimum of Success Club 6. Um, so we only have a couple days to lock that in. What that means for you and your coaches is, you know, instead of $500 for the rest of the year, they're looking at a possible only $250. Now, I remember when I was in that position between Diamond and Five Star, I mean, $500 is a lot of extra money. <laughs> and not to mention, we already get paid for hitting Success Club, but really trying to train your brain and look at the activities that the Beachbody programs are pointing us to. And that can indicate to us, you know, what's important as business owners, what activities are important to constantly replicate every single month. Um, <clears throat> so that's why the end of July is so imperative right now, and that's why there's a huge push. A couple things that I personally am doing to get to my goals. Um, Christina Delgado actually told me this trick, and I think it's brilliant. So I always say, you know, go back to your list of all the people that you've talked to. She mentioned today that she does a timeline review. So she'll um, scroll back on her timeline or even look at her photos. So like if you go to your um, social media page and you click on photos of yourself for the past couple months and every invite post that you've done for the past couple months, look through the comments on there. Is there a comment that you missed? Is there a person you didn't, you forgot to reach out to? Is there a person from those comments that said they were interested? Then you started talking to them and they kind of fell off and they never actually committed to it. Did you message someone who commented and they kind of ghosted on you? Go through your timeline review. Maybe you're on this day, maybe your photos, your albums, maybe just even scrolling through a couple months and looking at the comments and seeing is there someone you missed connecting with that was trying to connect with you or is there someone you tried to connect with and they weren't ready at that time and then make a list from all those people and start reaching out to them. The best way to lock in Success Club last minute is follow-ups, right? Because it does take time to make a new connection and a new relationship. But in a follow-up situation, you know, you've already broken that barrier. They've already been following you. And now is your chance to kind of switch their perspective a little bit. Um, but the perspective of Success Club is interesting to me. Obviously, the world's not going to crumble if you miss Success Club. Your business is not going to crumble. It doesn't mean anything um, in the grand scheme of things. But for me personally, you know, I had a lot of deliverables, as we used to call them in the corporate world, um, every single week and every single day by the end of day, by EOD, end of day, that's what the corporate world says, um, and the month. And if I missed any of these said deliverables, I mean, I would be on the chopping block. I would be having a meeting with my boss. I would be having a lecture. And every time I missed them would be a check mark, right? And then every check mark you got is closer to being fired. It's just like school. Um, every detention that you get, every demerit that you get, um, you know, that's like a little check mark. And for me, when I was finally in control of these possible demerits or these possible, you know, check marks on my record, I thought, you know, if I worked so hard in school and in, in jobs that I didn't really care for, why not work 50 times as hard at something that I do care for and something that does give me value and does give me purpose and does give me income that I'm working for myself and I'm actually helping people along the way. So I look at Success Club as, these are my deliverables for the month. This is the only thing that I have to hand in to my boss every single month. And yes, my boss is me. <laughs> and it doesn't really matter. However, it matters in, in, the, in the bigger picture, right? Um, so I try to communicate this to my team a lot. And I also try to communicate this to people who are trying to make the decision to sign up. So last minute decisions, we can get reckless, we can get desperate, we can get, you know, people can feel that in conversations, they can feel that you're stressed, and they can feel that you're anxious. And it's like, please just sign up with me. Um, so here is the time of the month that I really try to hit my timeline hard with answers to people's objections. Um, so I try every other post that I write to be an answer to an objection, right? So maybe right now you're getting hit with income objections. It's too much. They just can't afford it. They can't understand why Shakeology is that much. So whatever objection I'm getting the majority of, that's the one that I concentrate on because I know those people are watching. I know those people are paying attention. 
So for the next couple days, and this goes right along with curiosity marketing. I've been noticing everyone's chattering about curiosity marketing. That's what we already do, y'all. We already do that, just take the, the actual names out of it, right? That's what I've been doing for years. So you talk about, you know, at first I thought my shake was way too expensive. My shake, right? You're not saying it's Shakeology, it's from Beachbody, it's a Beachbody program. But then you're telling a story, placing yourself in the person's shoes, saying, but then I committed, and this is what I found about this product, right? It still prompts a question, and it's still answering a question from those people that you've already connected with, right? So if you guys have not done that yet, those two action items, like going back through your timeline and looking at, you know, maybe some missed connections, and then also really trying to hammer your timeline or your Insta stories or your Instagram or Snapchat with you know, answers to people's objections because it's all about perspective. Just like maybe you were reading the post I did earlier and you had a little bit of a perspective change about the business, right? Like, you know, starting a business from the ground up and putting half a million dollars of your own money into it and constantly having to be there and hire a staff and deal with taxes and, um, you know, licenses and all of that, the stuff that we don't even have to touch, that's hard. It's also hard to spend your whole life working for someone else and never to get those hours and days back. It's also hard to start your own business and be a policeman for yourself and make sure you're hitting all your goals. But it's like you choose your hard, right? For me, this is the lesser of that hard. And it's just like with our prospects. It's just like with um, someone who's thinking about starting a workout program, right? It's hard to be overweight and be unhappy with yourself. And it's also hard to make the decision and the investment to change your life. So in between those two hards, you have to bridge the gap of perspective, right? You have to talk about Listen, I chose that hard for a long time and then I chose this hard and here's how I got there and here's what it's adding to me, right? So in a way, we are constantly bridging the the gap between each hard and then we're trying on that bridge to change the perspective of someone following you or someone talking to you, right? Because ultimately our goal on social media as independent distributors as business owners is to talk about what we love, promote what we love, and ultimately get other people to buy into what we love and have them do the same thing, right? But our society is such that we are have been trained and are trained to think oppositely of the way our business is, right? We are trained to think opposite of invest in yourself, work for yourself, um, have freedom, uh, give time to yourself and you're a better mother, a wife, a friend, a person. So it's our job to constantly combat that. So if you are not talking about those things on your social media, talking about those things publicly, it's going to be that much harder in private conversations, especially in a last minute situation, to help people make that switch. Um, one other tip that I have is, you know, I've been seeing this so much on um, in new coach messages. And if you struggle with this, it's totally okay. I struggled with it for a long time. But it's sending really super long messages that don't elicit a response. Um, it can be confusing on, I still struggle with it, you know, how to direct a conversation to coaching or direct a conversation to challenge groups, you know, after you've made that connection or, you know, what is a challenge group or what is coaching? It can be so hard to explain sometimes. My top tip, what I do is I always ask questions. Well, what, what, what do you think coaching is from following me? What do you think a challenge group is? You know, what, what would help you more? And then I go, off of what that person thinks because you have to meet people where they are. A lot of times what I see is, you know, people will message someone and they'll be like, hey, um, I haven't talked to you for a while, but guess what? I thought of you for this perfect group that I have going on. It's a 30 day accountability group, no pressure at all. We have meal plans, nutrition, workouts, on demand. Uh, I think you would be great because you used to be a former athlete and you love reading books about personal development and I've noticed from your timeline, They've spaced out. They're gone. <laughs> You've lost their attention. You're not meeting them 
where they are, you're trying to have them come to where you are, right? You've been doing this for a little while. You know what a challenge group is. You know what a challenge pack is. You know what on demand is. You believe in it. They are not there. They're not with you. You have to meet them where they are currently in their life, in their mindset. They have no idea what you have to offer. So you have to start with questions. So instead of saying, if someone says, what is coaching? Instead of saying, well, you know, you sign up for this program and you use the shakes and you read your personal development and then you help other people do it too and you inspire them. I simply say, well, what do you think coaching is from following me for so long? LOL. So that I can get a sense for where this human being on the other side of this message is in their life, what they're thinking about what I'm doing, what they want out of what I'm doing, and then build on the conversation from there, making sure that in every response, I relate to them in some way and I ask them something in some way, right? If you end a message with a question, someone always has to answer. And as far as last minute logging it in, it is so important that you don't vomit all of the information and I do it all the time sometimes when I send messages I look back on it and I'm like dang it <laughs> it's okay it's okay to fail it's okay to try it's okay to say the wrong thing it's okay to miss goals but what is not okay is to not look at what you're doing reevaluate try something different and move forward I've been hearing a lot of you know I'm trying everything everything you're doing everything you're saying I'm doing I'm sending 40 messages a day I'm inviting all these people I'm spending all this time on my business but I wonder sometimes you know if we're focusing on the right things and if you're spending all that time doing the right things so I know the business works I know I can still hit success club after three years of turning off my ads, uh, turning off everything, haven't done any this month. So I know it's possible every single month for every single one of you. I know that when I started this business, I had absolutely zero market and I created it and I create momentum consistently every single month. But the majority of that is in honing your skills, having a different perspective, and concentrating on the right places at the right time. So if I was, I definitely need to back off my typing. <laughs> if I was you, and this is the last three days of the month, you know, regardless of where you are in your business, and, and this is kind of a tricky thing, um, we have a cut month coming up, right? Um, so everyone has this kind of weird mentality right now that they're gonna stop pushing in July and put their points in August. <laughs> that is like, the worst business decision that I have ever <laughs> come across in my life. That is like saying to a person, well, you know, you're dying of a heart attack right now, so I'm just gonna like lay off you for a couple days because we have a special coming up in August that you can get your medicine really, really cheap. <laughs> or that's like saying, <laughs> and it's just like a very interesting mentality to me. Um, because we are prize driven and we are, um, you know, fun driven and it's fun to be in a competition and see your name up there. But as a business owner, having the perspective that you have, you know, every goal must be met and you don't do yourselves any favor by laying back. The second you lay back or the second you say, I'm going to hold off for three days on talking to people or inviting, you step back that much more in your momentum. And I saw it happen to myself in June. In June, I said to myself, you know what, Bon? You've worked really hard for the past three years. You're going to take three weeks off for your vacation for the first time in three years. And I didn't message and I didn't answer people back. And I wasn't, I wasn't, um, you know, reaching out like I normally do. I wasn't, um, making connections like I usually do. And, and it affected me. It affected me a lot. And I looked at my, uh, I looked at my success club points in July early on and they were like nothing and I was like what is what is happening you know where, where did it all go and I realized it's because I put a stake in my momentum in June and no you don't always have to be on 150 and going 150 miles per hour but just keeping up a pace that you can run at and being consistent with that is so important so changing your perspective a little bit on success club 
when people say it is non-negotiable, it just basically means it's something in your business that you should never not pay attention to. Especially in July with all the rewards that are coming up, you really want to set yourself up for success for the rest of the year. I mean, right now even, if you're focused on being an elite coach, it is possible for everyone with the things that they have put in place. So um, change your perspective on the business. Help other people change their perspective on challenge groups or saying yes or committing by bridging that gap between the hearts. And then uh, publicly on your social media, so talking to your objections, still going along the same lines of that curiosity marketing, marketing. Going through your Facebook, seeing who maybe you've missed the past couple months, who maybe has said no. Maybe, you know, sometimes someone comments on an old post and I don't even see it. Um, you know, going back, checking in with those people, following up with them, letting them know you have some place for them to join. Um, taking advantage of all of the things that we have going on right now. Shift Shop is still huge momentum. Um, all of the announcements, you know, talking about them in the UK and getting excited about that. And then finally meeting people where they are. You know, meeting people, um, asking them questions, uh, not assuming that they know all of the things you know. Um, you know, really putting yourself in that old place of you looking into this business and wondering what it's about. So those are kind of like my top tips for, you know, perspective, um, talking about objections, asking questions in conversations, meeting people where they are, how to follow up with people these last couple days, and to really lock in those goals because you create your own momentum. You're not just, in this month, you're not just working for a success club in July. You're working for um, recruiting people that get into your challenge groups that become coaches that come on your team for a rank goal. Um, recruiting people that equal success club all-star legend. You know, you got to think bigger. You got to think bigger than this month right now. These little tiny goals are something great to focus on, but they equal something bigger and better. All right, guys, I hope you have an awesome weekend and happy end of the month.